Africa is the origin of man. All human beings started here. There were no human beings in other parts of the world until about 100,000 years ago. So for the four and a half million years of human evolution, it has been mainly here in Africa. Now, the human being is an animal, like other animals, but a special one. He is an animal that has got three characteristics, more convoluted brain with a lot of, 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 of curves, which enables, enables him to think and reason. Other animals don't do that. Other animals just work by instinct. Their reasoning capacity is very low. The second characteristic is that man walks on two legs. He's bipedal. If you can think, all the other animals either walk on four legs or they even crawl on the ground, but none of them walks on two legs. Now, that walking on two legs has an advantage because you are able to see ahead, to stand up and see, and see what's happening. Now then finally, man, the third characteristic is that man has got a hand which can hold things and hold tools and do work using tools. So that's how, therefore, while all creatures have problems, man has got the capacity to try and do something about those problems. And essentially, the problems of, 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 of creatures uh, are originally one big problem. The problem of oppression by nature. Nature oppresses creatures through disease, through drought, floods, earthquake. You see what is happening in, in, in Turkey recently? All those natural phenomena, adverse natural phenomena, affect all creatures, snakes, what? But the, 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 the difference with the human beings is that because of the other three unique characteristics, the brain, the bipedalism, and the work, the hands, they try to get solutions. Disease, you look for medicine. Hunger, you grow food. Floods, you look for solutions. Drought, 
you, 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 you learn irrigation and so on. Now, therefore, man is the only creature that can adapt nature to its needs. All other creatures have to adapt themselves to nature. That's why the chameleon, the chameleon is a very good example. Me as a soldier, I can put on green uniform if I want to hide myself, not to be seen in the grass. But the chameleon has no capacity to make uniform, so it adapted itself. When it is in the green grass, it becomes green. When it is where it's brown, it becomes brown. So other creatures try to adapt themselves to nature, while man tries to adapt nature, some parts of nature, to his own needs in order to improve the quality of his life. So you, the journalists, if you don't know that, you are really a danger to yourselves and society. Because that's what, that's what we call development. One and a half million years ago, Man invented fire. You hear that the human being has been here for four and a half million years. The universe has been here for much longer, for billions of years. But for us, just four and a half million years. When we evolved from other primates, and it become, became what they call Homo sapiens sapiens, the, the wise man. But for much of that time, we had no fire. For three million years, people had no, uh, the human beings had no fire. Until one and a half million years ago, I don't know who invented the fire, whether it was by accident or what, but they, they learned how to make fire. And that uh, discovery enabled them to solve so many problems. Instead of Okmeketa, you know Okmeketa? Okmeketa very well. Instead of eating raw food, when you call it kota, what do you call okumeketa okkota? What do you call eating raw food in Achori? Achori, come to the microphone, tell us. Dark no potato. Oh, that's a sentence now. We don't want a sentence. <laughs> Want a word? Dekmanumu. Dekmanumu. But that is still a sentence. That is still descriptive. But I'm going to call it a quota. And in uh, in Ateso Karmajong. It's I make it. I make it. Yes, sir. Oh, okay. And in uh, Rugubara? Ibiru. Ibiru. Uh -huh. So, you can imagine, for three million years, the human beings were just Ibiru, the food.
And, and that was quite a problem. But when man invented fire, then it helped them to roast the, roast the food, to, to cook it, to, to fry it, and then make it easier for eating. Then, some thousands of years ago, man invented agriculture. Because for many of those years, the human being did not know how to grow food. He was a hunter and a gatherer. He would go to the bush and, and start gathering wild food. But along the way, he learned to say, why can, I, why can I not take some of these seeds and grow them myself? The domestication of crops, the starting of agriculture, you should study these. If you go in, on the internet, you can see when agriculture started and where. Then some years, some other years, not long ago, much a few thousand years ago, for both crops and animals, maybe 10,000. You can go and check on the internet. I haven't checked recently. The human beings learned how to domesticate animals, livestock. That's why Yawanyankore came in. Went to the bush, got the cows, and got them from the bush, and said, you stay at home here. And then the, 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 the other livestock, the, the goats, the hens, the what? Now, all these, then some years ago, you can, you can check all this on the internet, the exact dates. Man invented the use of iron, iron tools. Iron tools are stronger, of course, they are more efficient. So that's how it is that progress in science and technology that makes society move forward, become transformed. Like, for instance, when, when the human being invented fire, before the invention of fire, I think the human beings were just sleeping in trees because they had no houses, but they could also not live in caves because the caves were dark and cold. And you couldn't go there. They would be full of snakes. But with the invention of fire, you could go with the fire into the caves, you chase the snakes, and you stay there. And the cave was more comfortable than the tree. Because the, the tree, all the rain, all the cold, all the mosquitoes, the wild animals. But in a cave, you are more protected. You can protect it from the rain, from the, the cold, from the, the wild animals, and so on. So, in, in, and this is the basic message of the NRM. Ever since we, when, ever since we, uh, when we started as a student movement, well, at that time there were other political groups, UPC, D, DP, Kabaka Yeka, and they were telling your people about tribes. Kabaka Yeka, Awaganda, Fengawaganda, Fengawaganda. Then this DP was for the Catholics. Talk, talk about Catholics, Catholics. Uh, then UPC was talking about Protestants and some Muslims. But we said this is really off the point. It is not identity. It's not who you are. 
It is what you need. Politics should be about the, the needs of the people. And the needs of the people are the, are the same. Security, hunger, thirst, food, lack of jobs, shelter, lack of good, good houses, lack of good clothes. It's the same needs. Why do you divert these people to things which have no body addition to them? That's how the NRM, many of us were, were members of those parties. I was in DP. These Rugundas were in UPC. But by 1965, we said, ah, these people, they were in the Kola, they were in the Kola, they were That's what part of the scriptures say. They, they left undone things they ought to have done. And they did that, they ought not to have done, and there's no truth in them. That's what the Bible says. So that's why for us we said no. For us, our being in, 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 in public affairs, forget, forget about politics. Even to be a priest or a witch doctor or whatever you call yourself, you must be clear why you are there. You should not go there to, to bring your confusion to the public. If you don't know, you just stay in your house. At least you confuse just your family only. But you come to the public, say, I want to, to, to show you the way. And you don't know the way yourself. It's, it's criminal. So that's why we said no. For us, our strategic goals in public affairs are prosperity. We want society to be prosperous. Uh -huh. And I will tell you later how, how that one will come about. Secondly, we want security, strategic security. 